am going to talk about the Society of Idea Collectors journaling that I'm doing. I wanted to share with you some of my thoughts and ideas on keeping my Society for Idea Collectors journal. And I also wanted to relate how some of the things that I am noting in here are beginning to influence the art that I'm doing. And I'm just going to show you at least one example. Society for Idea Collectors is a project by Dee Dee Willingham. There is a link to her channel and her playlist on the Society of Idea Collectors and the magazine Idea Playground in the description box below. Thank you, Dee Dee, for doing this. This has so much inspired me, and I'm having so much fun doing this. For me, for me personally, doing a journal like this is helping me dig deeper into my creativity. I think creativity is and can be very spontaneous, but as I've said before, it's like dreams. If you don't, if you don't write down those dreams when you wake up in the morning, you have them, and unless it's a very vivid dream, you tend to forget them. And that is the way it is, at least for me, with ideas. I, I mean, ideas just naturally flow and come to me, but if I don't grab a hold of them, they journey on. And by writing them down and collecting them in a journal, it is my way of catching hold of those ideas so that I can potentially use it later on in a project or remind myself that I wanted to do something, or in the case of mind mapping, it may trigger another idea. But I wanted to review for you one way, at least one way, in where the Society of Idea Collectors is influencing my new license plate art journal, where I'm going to talk about my Nebraska life. <laughs> and in fact, I will I may put my Nebraska life here and then put my name and maybe the Marriottier here. You saw me create this journal yesterday. Now I will say this journal was not inspired. Creating this did not come as a result of something that I wrote down in my idea collector journal. It came because I got new license plates and I didn't want to throw these away. And there are lots of projects out there of how to use old license plates. They're used as roofs on bird houses and, and uh, journal covers, book covers. There's just, they're nailed to walls. They, <laughs> they're all over the place as far as recycling and upcycling your old license plates. This idea to create this journal was not a result of anything that I wrote down in here. But now once I've started it and I've determined that what I'm going to do, because of looking through this big stack of Nebraska Life magazines, and this is just four of them. I mean, I have a huge not just a huge, a huge stack of these Nebraska Life magazines that were free at the library. If nobody took them, they would probably have gotten tossed. And that's sad. It, this is a nice magazine. It's fun to read it. And it's fun to learn about the state that you're living in. But it is also fun to create a journal with it. And I've tried to pick some that had articles that I enjoyed, but maybe I didn't mind painting or uh, cutting the magazine because I am cutting it to a 
with the five and a half inches. So in that sense, whatever magazine I use, I'll save some things, but there will be some things in here that will get painted over or cut out. Now, as I'm working on this, let's talk about the journal a little bit more. There was a suggestion that if you have multiple magazines to add more as you go along. And potentially I can do that, but I am going to fill up this section first. I'm not going to bind it, even though I poked holes in here with my crocodile, thinking that I would use ring binders, and I still might do that. I am tending toward just keeping it like this until I get this completely filled. If I'm at a good stopping point, then I will bind it. But if I decided that I wanted to go on to another magazine and add another one, it may very well become a Midori style, Traveler's Art style journal where it will just grow and grow and grow until it's like this. We'll see. I'm not sure I have that much to say about my Nebraska life, but who knows? Who knows where this will grow or go? One idea grabs on to another one. But what I'm going to do on these pages at least in this section, is paint and draw and journal some of my Nebraska memories. Now, for me personally, I grew up in Nebraska. I was born in Montana, if you need to know that, but I was a baby then. I don't really have any memories of Montana other than what my mother told me and it's on my birth certificate. <laughs> so my earliest memories come from Nebraska from when I was a toddler. Well, clear through my entire life, I did have a period of my life where I moved away from Nebraska for several years as an adult. But now I'm back in the state of Nebraska. So I'm going to start out with my toddler years and I'm going to document from my earliest memories through my entire childhood, growing up, through my college years, through my adult working years to the point that I moved away. And then perhaps then it'll be a good stopping point to add another magazine of when I came back. I've been back in Nebraska for a little over a year, so I'm adding to those memories now again. So what does the Society of Idea Collectors have to do with this? Well, there is a section in here that we tabbed, and I made the tab Lists, L-I-S-T-S. And I have another section called YouTube. So since I started putting this on YouTube, I, for some reason or another, I guess my mind just went there, I started my list of memories that I wanted to record in here. This is a list, and it's very scratchy. Not this side. I, I, tend, I tend to, when I'm writing in these journals, like if you look at this as my section of YouTube, it starts here. And I tend to start here, and then when I think that I'm going to start a big project, you'll see I have some blank pages in here. I go to the back and I work right to left. And look, these, I was sitting down last night writing down memories that I may want to document in my license plates, my Nebraska Life art journal. And I start out listing, listing, listing from preschool preschool memory. Not a lot of them, but a few of them. Preschool memories. And then I list on this page. So I've got a full page list here, a full page list here. And by the time I get over here to, I'm probably in about second grade here, I start sketching out. Well, even before then, here I, I did a little floor plan of one of the houses that we lived in 
Um, they're not the one over here when I was a toddler. I very vaguely remember that house. I remember the kitchen and the dining room. And there was a, a door over here, and that's all I remember about that house. Because of that one specific memory I had, I I remember that. And I'm not going to go into that, but I should probably put that floor plan here. And here is just kind of a sketch of, of what... I remember about the house that we lived in between my toddler years and my probably second grade years or primary years, we'll call them over here. I remember a lot more about that house and I just kind of sketched out where the kitchen was, where the dining room and the bedrooms and the living room and the porches and that type of thing. It, it means something to me and that's all it needs to do to is mean something to you. When I got over here, of course, I was older, and we lived in this house a lot longer, so my sketches got a little bit more sophisticated. These are just memories, and and uh, I've got the front view of that house, I've got the north view, I've got the south view. I don't have the back view, but I could very well sketch it out, because I can just shut my eyes and see that house. We lived in it for... Well, from my second grade year through through my ninth grade year. So we lived in it several years, so I know this house and this piece of land very well. It's, it's ingrained into my mind. I have a lot of memories of growing up there. And I want to record those. And I don't care if they're not accurate. They're, they're my memory of what was at that time. This house is gone now. This house is gone I have no idea whether this house is still standing. My my gut feeling that it's probably been torn down too. So let's step, switch over here and I got even more sophisticated. And I know this looks like a bunch of scribble to you. But this is the long driveway. We had a long driveway. It was a country house. We had a long driveway. We had a long driveway and it, it came up the house. We had a, two mulberry trees about in the center. And with what I had at the time, I just did scribbles in here for the leaves like it was like in the summer or something. And the house sat back down the lane a little bit further. And we would come this way and our driveway would cu curve over this way. And the cars would park here. And we had another uh, because, I mean, who follows one straight driveway? Uh, we made a driveway coming around this way. So, and this was just a dirt path that... Uh, my parents and probably my older brother uh, started driving their cars over this way. And maybe even the farmer, there was a farmer who farmed the land around us, and perhaps he started that path coming that way. So really, we had a really nice little sophisticated roundabout driveway. <laughs> it just wasn't paved. It got very muddy. We never used that. In when it rained, we always used, this was graveled. And it was all graveled roads, and we would come out here, you can't tell it here, but I've got a little stone wishing well. When we were kids, we would come out, and there's a mailbox here, and we would sit there and we'd gather those gravel stones and build a little wishing well. And sometimes, you, you have to think out in the country, there was traffic on this road, but it was not constant traffic. It was not constant, so we would tend to go out and sometimes wander into the street, and sometimes we would build a, a wall of stones or wishing well and see if the cars would run over it. <laughs> One of my memories. There was a fence coming down this way. There was a tree here. This farmer who farmed the land around us had cows in here. And I just kind of drew some little sketchy animals in the barn. The barn I know well because we had a a hayloft up there. We would go exploring in that hayloft. And there was a windmill. I used to climb that windmill way up to the top. So this is kind of just a fast. Last night while I was making that list, this was my fast sketchy sketch. Just to ingrain. And even if I'm as I'm talking to you now, those visual memories come back to me. And that's one of the advantages of doing something like that. The more you write down, the more you sketch and draw, you go, oh yeah, there was a fence here. I remember that fence because we used to put the, these wooden fence poles on the 4th of July. We would nail one of those pinwheel 
4th of July fireworks onto it and it goes spin all around. I remember that, you know? So it just, one visual memory, one word will trigger another word and you you just keep going on and on and on till you have uh, a, a fodder for your art journal. And what I want to do is translate, maybe not all of them, but some of the more vivid ones into my Nebraska Life art journal. So I ended, let's see, my last, I think I wrote here, I'm, I'm in the third or fourth grade here. So I have, I have a couple pages left to keep going on this in my YouTube. I put it in my YouTube because this, this, I'm associating this list with this art journal, which is a project for YouTube. I'm just kind of sharing with you some of the ways that I'm using my, my Society for Idea Collectors art journal. I hope that you've enjoyed this video, and this has been more of a chat video, but it's me sharing my ideas on collecting ideas and what I'm learning from this. And it has also been my thoughts on how I'm translating my ideas into my art projects. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I hope that in some small way that I've inspired you to start a journal. It may just be a small journal. It may be, uh, Dee Dee says, Post-it notes are a priority. I don't have post-it notes. <laughs> I tend to staple things. I tend to tear up scrap paper and staple it in. I need to get some post-it notes. So I have a lot more that I want to do. This has just been fun for me. I've been so inspired. And I hope that I'm able to, through sharing this with you, inspire you in your own creative journey. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next page.